It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots, and um welcome to another week. Uh we're back. I had a nice little two week. It's good to have you break. back, bro. It's good to have you back. Listen, man, I thugged it out. You know, um, I, I, I got on a plane with the family and we flew uh, down to South Carolina and um, I was home in Monk's Corner for a little while. And then um, I stayed on the Isle of Palms for a couple of weeks, man. Mm. And, you know, once I got there, they declared the state of South Carolina a coronavirus hotspot. Whoa. And it didn't take me long to realize why they are a coronavirus hotspot. Why? Because all you see in South Carolina is people with no mask mm -hmm. and no shoes on. <laughs> and I'm not stereotyping. I'm not racial profiling. I'm just saying that at least 99.9% .9 of those folks were Caucasian. Really? <laughs> oh, yes. I, I didn't realize. And maybe I did realize it, but I didn't think it was a thing thing. I didn't mm. realize not wearing a mask is a political statement. Hmm. I didn't know that. I, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that it, it, people are are making political statements by saying, hey, we're not going to wear a mask. This right. Is my, this is my idea of rebelling against the system. You know, people can't tell me what to do. Right. I, I'm like, oh, OK, I just don't want to get sick. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And if they're telling me that wearing a mask is what you know, decreases your chances of, of of getting infected with coronavirus or spreading it if you're asymptomatic. I'm just doing my part for the ecosystem. Baby. Right. That's all. And that's what it. is it you think that they're pushing back against like government overreach? I I guess I have no idea, bro. I think it's a combination of two right. things. I think it's a combination of people, you know, not wanting to be told what to do by the government and also uh, people were riding with, with the president. Right. But even he wore a mask. He was at the hospital. He wore a mask. Finally. Yeah, he wasn't wearing one before. You know yeah. <laughs> Finally. But, you know, you, you've been beating it in people's heads for, for weeks that uh, you, you do have to wear a mask. You don't have to wear a mask. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Who cares? Like, you know, I think that we, we really don't understand how um, easily influenced people are. And that's not a black thing. It's not a white thing. You know, that's just a thing. In America, people are easily influenced by those they look up to. Right. That's just that's just what it is. That's why you have religious leaders. That's why you've had cult leaders. That's why you have, you know, uh, stands. You know, people follow the, the superstars the way that they do. That's why you people who work, who, who worship teams like that's just we live in an idol culture here in America. And if your idol ain't doing something, you're probably not doing something either. If your idol is doing something, you're probably going to fall in line and do that as well. So we follow the things that the people who influence us do. I Yes, 100%. Right? And yeah. we follow them whether they're good for us or bad for us. But I think we're following them because we think they're good for us. Or, or, or at some point... They've done something that has been good for us or they've done something that has made us feel good. Or it, it's some type of benefit they have given us in some way. And that's why we continue to follow them. So I guess my question is, how much responsibility do we have as leaders over the people that follow us? A lot. And should we be held accountable for the behavior of our followers? And that's not just politicians but like entertainers you know uh rock stars you know if if rock stars are out there living some crazy life where they're fucking up hotel rooms and all that kind of stuff and they're marketing that should they be accountable if their fans start doing the same thing to a certain no to a certain extent though right because if you have a song called tear the fucking hotel room up right you know, every, you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah you know and back in the day when three six mafia had a song called tear the club up when you play tear the club up, and motherfuckers start tearing the club up. Hey, that's a that's a call to action, baby. It's <laughs> yeah. the reason that that song was banned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it was banned. Saying? Hell yeah, that shit was banned. What you mean? Tear the club up was banned. Like like I, I don't know if it was I don't know if it was CNN. I don't know if it was just clubs across the country. That song was banned. Like you could at least in South Carolina, you couldn't play that. You couldn't play tear the club up. Really? Oh, I'll, I'll give you a better example. 
CNN definitely back in the day ran a story on Young Jeezy and his uh, snowman T-shirts. Okay. Right? Because they knew Jeezy at the time was rapping about selling massive amounts of cocaine. He was the snowman. So there were schools that had banned the snowman shirt. That's why Jeezy came out with the mixtape, can't ban the snowman. Uh. Right? Now, I don't know if that, I don't know if he was influencing people to sell drugs, but he was influencing people to embrace a lifestyle that we know is not constructive for them. So... I guess what I'm trying to say is like, at what point do we or do we ever have to feel responsible? Like I said, I think it's when you're giving somebody a direct call to action. So you if you, do, but if, if, if we, okay, so direct calls to action we're responsible for, but just our every day, every day to day behavior, we're not responsible if people follow that. No, no I, de I definitely think we are because there's some people who um show improve through actions and deeds more than words and lip service. So you can watch the way somebody lives mm. and be inspired. You can watch the way somebody lives and be influenced. That's why I think early on, you know, people were like other Republicans were saying, Trump, put the goddamn mask on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not, not because, not just because it's good for the health of the country. It's good politically. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. like, like be, be a leader, you know, like, like, like show, Hey, my leader is doing this too. So the rest of the country will follow. That's why it was so dangerous when he wouldn't put one on. That's why everybody got so up in arms. Like, bro, you're the president. If you don't put one on, what you think others are going to do? I guess I don't understand why it's become political because you would think that the best thing for the economy would be if we could go back outside and purchase things and consume. And the only way that we can do that without spreading Corona is if people are using proper masks. So you think a, a, a strong economy president, which is what Trump runs on, is going to go, wear the shit that lets the economy start humming again? Well, you know, I think wearing a mask for somebody like Donald Trump is admitting that you're wrong, right? So now he's dug his heels into the no mask. <laughs> he's he doing that heel toe. He no, got not the, the heel toe. Not, not, not just the no mask. Yeah, yeah. The fact that coronavirus isn't real. Hey. Now, you know what I mean? That was his first thing. Like, coronavirus is a democratic hoax. It's not real. It's right. going to go away. I mean, shit, just two days ago, he goes, if you test half of the people, you'll only have half of the cases. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's right. <laughs> he's not right. Bruh. Just because you're... We've just been you doing this our whole life. The, I, I, I don't have an STD. I don't have an STD test. You know what I mean? You can't get the STDs without the test. It's better as a joke. When it's a joke, when it's a joke on stage, it rips. When it's coming from the president, it sounds stupid as fuck. Okay, yeah, but ignoring but, ignoring a problem does not make it go away, especially when it's herpes. But it doesn't go away if you know you have it. That is. Hold on, let me think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on, you said it doesn't go away if you know you have exactly. it. That is very true. You might as that well is, just call it braille. But the thing is, you know you have it. Right. So whether you're ignoring it or not, you can't ignore them. Can't ignore them genital warts down there, baby. Yeah, you're right. And outbreaks is dead. What's happening? I'm here. What's here for a couple of days. What's, What's popping? Poppin'? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's popping? Brand new herp just popped in. <laughs> what, 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 what did you... <laughs> Herp's rental car. What did you see, what did you see this week uh, that was positively brilliant? Uh, absolutely fucking idiotic. Man, you know it was absolutely idiotic. I'm gonna be selfish with this one, but we did this great piece on uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, who was Jeffrey Epstein's accomplice. Yes, and she's still alive. She's still alive, allegedly. Who knows? Man, I lost my bet. <laughs> <laughs> you had her out. You had her out early. You had her out. Had her out early. I was like, they're not gonna play with her. They they getting her out first inning, baby. They're not even gonna play with her. They already set the tone with Call Epstein. Call in the relief. Call in the <laughs> relief. <laughs> they already set the tone with Epstein. We know what they expect. They are gonna get her out early. Right. So we did this piece. We put it up on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and I put a little clip of it up on Twitter. It gets over a million views on Facebook, and then Facebook takes it down. Why? Bullying. If Who the hell are you bullying? If there's one group of people that you should be able to bully, it's convicted. It's pedophiles. pedophiles, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? Convicted? You can't call someone who's a convicted pedophile a pedophile? 
No, nah, I can't. It could. It couldn't be because of her. It had to be. You. I mean, and I love. I didn't. I haven't. I didn't see that one. Uh, but I love. I love those videos that you do, bro. You must. You must have did a. You must have did a quick little joke or jab at somebody else. I mean, yeah. There's tons of jokes, but every one of them. We do jokes and jabs at everybody, so they should pull down every one if that's the case. It's just real curious, and I don't want to get all conspiratorial, but like, it is curious that these people are entrenched in the upper echelon of power, and a video is going super viral on Facebook that literally exposes only the factual things we know about them, right? I mm -hmm. only went off fact. I didn't go off conspiracy, conspiracy or anything. I just showed the facts that we know about them and the people that enabled them and the facts we know about the people that enabled them. And that shit gets taken down from Facebook. Isn't that curious, bro? Well, well you fucking up their game. Think about it, right? I never okay. even heard of this woman. I never even heard of this woman until she got arrested, mm -hmm. right? So, okay, okay, we got to do our due diligence and make it a media story. Boom. So it goes out there, it becomes a thing. Now nah, we got to wait for this story to die down before we kill it. Right. And so then you do this video and put it out and it gets a million views. Mm. They're trying to not they're trying to make people forget about her so they could kill her ass. So when whenever whatever they do with her happens. Yeah. Right. Everybody's just like, oh, yeah. And then they go back to what they regularly schedule programming. Right. That's that's what I think. You're bringing yeah. attention. You're making it hot. You're making the block hot show. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. It's fucked up that it, it, that it could potentially work like that. And that's how these motherfuckers get off. It pissed yeah. me off. that If you take it down off of a bullying technicality, come on, bro. Yeah, I am um, I am sick of... Uh, you can show murder videos on Facebook. You can show shootings yeah. on Facebook. Like, how many horrible things have we seen on Facebook? They got white supremacist groups. They got Facebook pages. And I can't make fun of pedophiles on Facebook? Yeah, and, and, and that's that. If, if, if there's one group of people that should be shamed. Shit. It's pedophiles. Come on, bro. Like, I could, are we really going to be out here practicing tolerance for pedophiles? Come on. That's what you want to die on? That's the hill you want to die on, Zuckerberg? Like, like come on, man. Like, yeah, it's, 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 yeah I, don't, I don't understand that. I really don't. Um, I, I saw something that was positively uh, brilliant, brilliant this week. What did you see? Uh, I thought the way Jill Scott handled um, Kyle Quero. Uh, who plays, he used to play for the practice squad for the Dallas Cowboys, but now he plays for the XF, well, there is no XFL no more, but he played for the Seattle Dragons. He got on Twitter, right? And he did something that I don't understand why people do. Yeah. I really don't. I, I really don't. Everything doesn't need your opinion. Okay. Hey, remember, remember when we used to have this saying, like, uh, talking out loud? Are thinking out loud. Thinking out loud, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinking yeah, out yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. it would be things that you would think. <laughs> talking out loud is how you talk. You just, just <laughs> that's not talking. Yes, exactly. <laughs> talking out loud is exactly, that's exactly what you're fucking supposed to do. Right? You're supposed to talk out loud. But when you, when you, when you, when you, when you think out loud, thinking out loud is dangerous. But, and I don't understand. He got on Twitter uh -huh. and he, he asked this question. He said, uh, I, I can't find it. Where the hell is the tweet, Taylor? Basically, he asked, he said, do people find Jill Scott sexy? Like, really? Do people find Jill Scott sexy? Right. What is why? Yeah. Like, like I just want to know how do you think that's gonna go your way? Right. Like, like when I see people do stuff like that, I think to myself, they want the attention. Mm -hmm. They 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 want the smoke. They 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 want to rile people up today. So when you see stuff like that, you even have to ask yourself, should I even give this any energy? No. Because that's what they want. Yes. That's what they're feeding into. Yes. And so he posted that. Oh, yeah. He said people are attracted to Jill Scott and by no means is she ugly. But y'all really sexually aroused by her. And um, Jill, after everybody came to her defense, she she waited for like a day or two uh -huh. and she was trending. Everybody came to her defense. She tweeted, wait, I was trending again. OK, then justice for Breonna Taylor, justice for Sandra Bland, justice for Ola Watoin Salu. Loving ourselves and each other is respectful and uplifting, supportive, eyes on the prize, love village, eyes on the prize. The reason I love that, right, mm -hmm. is because when you're a public servant and you're really here to serve the needs of the public and you don't have an ego and you're not leading with ego and you're not, not trying to make things about you, right? Mm -hmm. Even though she could have came out and said something about Kyle and like, you know, really... Like, I can't believe people come at me like this. Whatever. She could have really played that role and really got more sympathy. She made it about what was important. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she didn't, she, yeah, she, she didn't make she, it about herself. She, 
Hey, she wasn't thinking about herself. She realized that shit's not important. That shit that he's talking about over there, that shit wasn't important at all. No need to give that any energy. I'm not going to be a distraction. Even mm. though y'all have allowed mm. this to be a distraction, mm. I'm not I'm not going to be a distraction. I'm going to put y'all back focused on what y'all need to be focused on. That's why she said eyes on the prize. And she said it twice. Eyes on the prize, Love Village. Eyes on the prize. Andrew, we have a problem with keeping our fucking eyes on the prize in this era. Yeah, you're right. That's actually a great point. We're so easily distracted. It's almost like the way the culture works, you know, and by the culture, I'm talking about culture, not black culture specifically, but like, it's almost how we operate. Like, what are we distracted with today? What are we distracted with tomorrow? What's the new news story? Who's the new person we're canceling? It's just this constant distraction matrix, you know? You know why? Why is that? Because majority of people don't even know what the fucking prize is. Eh. Majority of people are Wally Coyote chasing the goddamn roadrunner. What is the prize? that's my point that's why i said most people don't know. right now some, what, some what would people, your some, prize be i mean for me as a black person my prize would be the changing of legislation my prize would be uh reparations right Not, and when i say reparations i mean some type of economic equity package for black people my mm. my, my 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 prize is america really you know having a sense of atonement and and saying you know what we recognize that Slavery was wrong. And a lot of things that are happening in the black community right now are because of the systemic, you know, uh, systemic oppression and systemic marginalization that we, we, we caused this community. So we want to make this right. And this is how we're going to make it right through this economic equity package. You know, we're going to start making investments into the black community. You know, we're going to uh, change laws to change the way that we police. I don't think that they, they, should, they should change laws. Uh, change, change the way that they police. They just need to hire new police. I don't. I don't mm. think you can reform. I really don't. I, I honestly, truly don't think you can reform police officers as they currently exist. I think mm. it's like trying to reform a pit bull. That's interesting. You know, I've changed my tune on reparations. Talk to me. I um, I understand the argument for reparations, and I think that there's a really good argument for reparations, but I don't think it's based on slavery. OK, talk to me. I think that while American slavery is different and every different country, slavery was obviously different. There's no way to have like the same level of slavery in every different place. But while America's uh, slavery was absolutely uh, horrendous and different, slavery is not unique. If we go back in history, every group of people will have been enslaved by another group of people. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't think because you were enslaved during a time where everybody else was also enslaved, that it means that there should be reparations for that enslavement. Because then as a Scottish person, do I go back to England and do some English people go back to whoever enslaved them and do some Viking culture, go back to another Viking culture and go, we want our reparations. It's just, it's endless. It just keeps on going on and on and on. I will say though, that the treatment within Jim Crow redlining uh, not giving out loans for bank uh, bank loans for uh, black people to build the equity that uh, white people benefit from in the real estate market alone, specific legislation that didn't allow, allegedly, I need to look into this a little bit more, but didn't allow white people to resell their house to black families. Like yeah. all of that, the destruction of like uh, black Wall Street. And I, again, I need to look into more of these things, but like to me, those are the best arguments for uh, atonement via some sort of reparations because they show not, not specifically slavery, but they show a direct force, a systemic force from a government to hold down a group of people from the American dream, right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's 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 what that's what slavery was too. It's all systemic racism. It right. was it. All, but, all, but when all the slaves were did, brought here, all, they, the, they weren't all brought the here. It was kept updating. Right, exactly. They updated in different ways. I that's guess all they I'm, did. I guess what I'm trying to say is that like if if slavery is the is the end all be all for why a group of people should use should get reparations, I think the reason why it's used is because Oh, it's not though. Oh no, I know it's not. I know it's not. I guess yeah. what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is like when I've looked back into other groups that have gotten reparations, like I think uh, uh, post Holocaust Jews, I think uh, Japanese people in, a, in in the internment camps, they got mm -hmm. reparations, right? The, there weren't internment camps going around the world, right? They got a specific, unique treatment 
during a time where that wasn't happening. When blacks were slaves in America, they were also slaves in Africa. They were slaves in Brazil. There were slaves in all these different parts of the world. Yeah, but I think somebody I think people would say, um, you know, the, the, the blacks here in America are the reason that America is America. Because the fact that you had all of those years of free labor, America was able to build an industry. It was able to build a, a capitalist society that everybody benefited from except for the people who actually it's were out there doing the work. Definitely a massive part of it. It's definitely a massive, massive part of it. Um, undeniable. Uh, I think there are a lot of different things that ended up building America and a lot of like, um, you know, global events that are happening that turn America into a superpower. You know, do you know, you know how much money you would save if Alex worked for you for free <laughs> for, 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 for years? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Do you know how much money you would save, shows if Alex you worked for you? Do you, you know, do you know how fast? What'd you say, Alex? He said, "Don't give him no ideas." Hold on, did Alex just yell, "Let me free"? Did he say, "Let me free"? <laughs> Yo, but I'm so here's saying. here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Let's say let's say uh, this is this is interesting. So Al works for me. Obviously, he gets paid. Everything's great. Let's say one day Al goes, yo, I want to go out on my own, right? And let's say after going out on his own, I do certain things. I I spoil his name in the industry. I'm telling people they're about to hire him. Don't hire him. I'm doing all these things to hold him down. If Al wants to sue me for money because of that treatment, he should sue my ass for money and he should be paid for that shit. Not only can he sue you for what he's owed, he can sue you for his future uh, uh, compensation because you shit it on his name. Yeah. You tell you telling everybody he ain't shit, whatever, yeah. whatever you might have. Trust me, I've been in that position. People have cost me uh, future monies. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by, 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 by shitting on my name and, right. and, and paint, painting a picture of me. Right? Slander, so, right? I think they call yeah, it, or libel absolutely. or something like that. Yeah. Liable, liable, all of that. You know what I mean? So, yes. But do you understand, I, I, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that I think yeah, that what, a lot of times, what, like if I think if white people really understood, because I think a lot of white people are just super ignorant to the black experience in America post slavery. I don't think there's any white people that are going to go, well, slavery wasn't that bad. All white people know is that bad. And then they they think that once slavery ended, it was like clean slate, black people, you got the same ability as white people. Hell no. okay. They think that because yeah, what, so it, it in my opinion if the conversation shifted from reparations for slavery to reparations for the treatment of Jim Crow, redlining, all these things, and we started educating white people on the systemic oppression, specifically financial systemic oppression that black people have went through, I really wonder if their eyes would start to open and go, oh, shit, they were literally stopped from building wealth. They Andrew, were stopped. You just said, first of all, does you that just make said sense? Something. Am I making that sense? Ma- that makes, it makes all the sense in the world. All right. And um, that, that conversation is a conversation that, that everybody who makes Black a, people a, a, have this conversation and white people are listening to black people have this conversation. But I wonder if the average white person even knows. No, I don't think they know. But uh, everything you're saying, that is the conversation when it comes to reparations. It's not just slavery. It is Jim right. Crow segregation. It is the legislation that was put in place to systemically oppress people. It is redlining. It's all of those different things. It's the war on drugs. It's all of those different things that go into why black people should have, you know, some compensation. It's really just simple. It's a simple concept. Uh, America systemically did something to black people to put us in the position. Specifically so systemically, financially, right? Like Yes. yes. Financially so yes, oppressed. And yes. if you financially oppressed, you should atone for the financial It's just that simple. Right? Systemically, and I, systemically do something to get us out. I truly, it's really, it's really I just truly that simple. believe, and I know that there are black people listening to this right now, they're like, how could they not be aware of this? I truly believe that there are a lot of white people that have no clue what redlining is. That They have no clue what Absolutely. just like not giving black people bank loans are. Right. There was Absolutely. this interesting video that's going around. I have to check the legitimacy of it, but it seemed pretty good where uh, in order to basically build out the suburbs and build 5000 unit homes and stuff like that uh, or communities, you needed government back loans. And the only way to get those government back loans was if the developers agreed not to sell the house to black families. And then the people who bought it agreed not to resell it to black families. So now you have this situation where you could buy a house for cheap. I think it was the equivalent of hundred thousand dollars. Now is maybe $10,000 back in the day. And that middle class family, which black people were middle class back then, would have been able to purchase property. And now that house is worth four hundred thousand dollars. That's three hundred thousand dollars in equity you get to pass down to your kids. You know Absolutely. what I mean? 
that That's changes everybody. shit over generations. You, you should read a book called The Color of Law. I ain't it, reading it, that it, shit. It explains all of that <laughs> stuff uh, in, a, in a very good way. But also, I mean, how many people, I mean, I guess maybe they do because they might have saw the 13th documentary on Netflix, but you think about the See, 13th Amendment. I haven't seen Amendment. the 13th. I haven't seen the 13th yet. But you're familiar with the 13th Amendment? Right. right, which is a, which, it is the uh, you don't have to pay it, people for uh, no 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 it ban it bans slavery and involuntary servitude except as punishment for a crime, right 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 so, so you it, can, it, it provided yeah. it provided a legal basis for slavery to continue in the country because think about it Andrew yes if I let you go yeah. I let you free but I don't give you anything yo I don't give you any means to yo. make any money yeah. What do you think you're going to do? What do you think a no, human no, no, is no, going no. to go do? So, so here's the thing. I've been thinking about that because I, I haven't seen the documentary, but someone explains to me the point in it, right? I've been thinking about how you make the argument to like, uh, let's say like uh, Amer real America people, like constitutionalist America people, right? Because there might be constitutionalist America people that go, well, white people go to jail too and they end up doing free work as well. You know, so this affects both people. It, it, obviously, there's more black people per capita in jail. Et we don't even have to get into the argument. But this is what I would say. It's unfair business practices. If you're a constitutional American, right, and you believe in a country and you believe in fair business practices, how are you going to let this prison that has free labor compete with this regular construction company that got to pay minimum wage. That's unfair to the mom and pop construction company, Ooh, isn't it? Go ahead, show. See, let me hear some more. I like this. I I'm like just, this. I'm just saying, if I'm, a like mom, this. if I'm a mom and pop construction company that's white owned, black owned, Mexican owned, doesn't matter what it is, I got to compete with slave wages. It's impossible for me to compete. So now you are punishing me as a business owner. We got to cut so, that out. So, so you're saying these corporations, uh, even these mom and pop stores, should be absolutely against. The, the prison system as it's currently constructed. Because it protects your own business. If yeah, these yeah, prisoners yeah, are out yeah, there yeah. making license plates and you're a license plate maker and you got to pay your people $15 an hour, they got to pay them $0 an hour, who do you think is going to get the contract from the state? I agree wholeheartedly. I agree wholeheartedly. What do you think of, um, what do you think of abolitionists? I want to, I want to talk to, I haven't, I haven't spoken to an abolitionist, but I would love to talk to an abolitionist. What do you, what do you think of of abolitionists. Are you familiar with that abolitionist movement? Yeah, like the Mark Twain's of the world and the Harry Beecher Stowe's and these people who, like, I guess, maybe saw the evils of slavery prior to, you know, a lot of uh, white people at the time. Is that what you're talking about? No, I think, I mean, no, you're, I, yeah, you're, you're right. But I think now it's about... Um, oh, like them, abolish the police? Uh, they, yeah, they don't believe in jails. Oh, abolish jail. And, and prison prison abolition. That's what it is. Oh, prison I thought abolition. you were talking about like back in the day. Like, yeah, it's a prison abolition movement and they're a network of groups and activists that want to uh, reduce or eliminate prisons and the prison system and replace them with systems of rehabilitation that, that don't place the focus on punishment and government institutionalization. I think uh, in theory, it's great. I think that there are certain people. I think they need to be on World Star Island. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, or or certain people just kill. Like, if you're like a a pedophile, just you know what I mean. Like, you just kill him. If you're a rapist, just kill him. Like, all that kind of shit, you could just kill him. I'm okay. Well, with well, that. See, well, see, the problem with that is, uh, what about false convictions for rape? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? What about um? No, you're right. It it creates I, a I, I, yes tricky yeah, situation. And and, and, I, and I don't want nobody to take this the wrong way, even though I know y'all will. Can a pedophile be rehabilitated? I don't no, know. I don't think they can. That's I the thing. I don't think so either. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's the thing. That's that's why I don't have that much. But again, you're right. There could be false convictions, and you know, you could have some. One, there's always these stories where like uh, a kid is in high school, has a girlfriend in high school. She's 17. He's 18. He turns 19. Now he's hooking up with a girl that's under under 18. You know what I mean? So they're like, oh, blah blah blah. You have to register as a sex vendor. This that the other. It gets, it's, look, it's tricky. I understand. I know just like killing people isn't the right situation, but I do feel like jails are important. I feel like we can improve our jails, but I yeah, do, I you know I, what I mean? Love the, yeah, I love the idea of, and I've said, I've been saying this for years. I love the idea of jails being more of a rehabilitation center. You know what I mean? When we talk about, you know, uh, correct, they call it correctional facilities, right? Mm. But it's like, what are you really correcting? Like, if you're going to take this person and, you know, put them away for 10 years, 15 years, when they go back in society, right? Wouldn't you want them to be an upstanding citizen? 
You know what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. that, that's that's one of the beauties of the nation of Islam, right? The nation of Islam can take these convicted felons, the the worst of our society, and transform them into the, these these upstanding, honorable human beings, right? Like, wouldn't you want that for everybody? who goes to prison, wouldn't you want to give them some form of education? Wouldn't you want to give them some form of job training? So, you know, when they go out into the world, when they get back into the world, they're a totally different person and they have acquired a skill set that where they can actually go get a job and make some, make some, make some legal money and not go back to the streets. Like I, I, I love the idea of it being a correctional facility or a real rehabilitation facility that really reforms people. Yeah, I like the idea of reform. I can't speak to the Nation of Islam because I don't know anything about it uh, and how they reform. Well I'm, well, I'm just speaking of, you know, the story of Malcolm Little to Malcolm X. Yes, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, you, Amazing you know, you story. Know, yeah, you know the story of Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. Like, you you know, you, you saw right. the evolution in these men. You saw the change in these men, the growth in these men. That's just the NOI's MO. That's, what, that's one of the, that's why I love, you know, what the Nation of Islam, you know, has stood for us so much historically over the years because the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I've seen them change that's, humans. In a weird way, that's that's how I view America. Talk like to me. I know there's times that where like you know July Fourth just happened and people weren't celebrating America or they didn't feel comfortable celebrating America, but like I look at America as the transition of you know Malcolm Little to Malcolm X. You know what I mean? It's built on these things that were fucked up and treatment that was horrible and deplorable and things that you don't stand for. But my hope and from what I see is continual progress and continual yep. progress based on these ideals that we're trying to live up to, or at least a lot of us are trying to live up to and a lot of us believe in and these ideas of equality and these ideas of... Um, you freedom, know, freedom and liberty, liberty, li liberty for all, you know, freedom of speech and the freedom of expression and these types of things. So like when I look at it and I see where we're going and obviously it's easier for me because I'm not the one that's being oppressed by a lot of this shit. But like when I see it, I'm like, OK, we're moving in the right direction. So I'm here to celebrate that. I'm here to wave the flag and I'm here to go. Yeah, see, we're going to get there. Maybe not my generation, maybe my kids, but we're going to get to the place where we want to fucking be. And that's something I could celebrate as long as we're progressing. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And I mean, you said something earlier that I think um, that I think will help us get there. Uh, but but we have to all be willing to be open minded enough and keep our ears open enough to sit down, listen and learn. You said that you are not aware you don't think it's a lot of white people that are aware of certain things. I wasn't. I feel, I, I feel like that. I feel like that with every culture mm. because we're all in our own little individual bubbles, whether we want to admit it or not. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I have my experience as a black man in America. You have your experience as a white man in America. I'm from I'm from the South, South Carolina. You have your experience as a white man in America from New York City. Yeah. But then there, there's a, there's literally an Asian American living in Manhattan with you. That's having a total different experience than you are. Right. And I mean, literally, y'all might live in the same building. Y'all might yeah. live a block away from you. Y'all might go to the same school, everything. But your experience with that with that person is your experience in this country is totally different than that person's experience in this country. Right. And it's just and I think that we don't always do a good enough job of sitting down and, and explaining what's going on in our you know, respected communities. I think that we all just assume Yo. this person doesn't know and they're playing dumb. Low key. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, this person, yeah. this person knows, but he'll never admit it because of the privilege and the power that they have and they benefit from. So they'll play clueless. You know what I'm saying? Don't underestimate someone's ignorance. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. shocking how little we really know about each other, man. Two things about ignorance, Schultz. What's that? Two things. Um, what you don't know Right. Could be considered ignorant until you learn. Yeah. But what you what you think, think you, you know, know is also ignorant yeah. about somebody is what's really ignorant. Yeah. Right. So let's 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 go into the deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> right? But no, talk about real quick before we get in there. Okay. And I think this okay. will set us up as well. OK. It's like in a way. I think that we are less understanding than we used to be. Because back in the day, right? Let's say I'm a white guy, right? Mm -hmm. But my favorite show is Martin. 
and they got some like white jokes in Martin. I got to put up with the white jokes because I love the show and I love the characters and Martin so fun. So I just put up with some white jokes because of this thing. And there's only five shows on TV back in the day anyway. So this is my favorite one. So I put up with it. And there's a gay guy that got to put up with some gay jokes. And there's a black dude that's got to put up with some black jokes and some other show. We had to put up with ideas or feelings or beliefs that were a little different than ours because we were forced to fit into this thing. Right. Especially yeah. in entertainment. Now yeah. we got a yeah. different TV channel. There's so much representation that we don't got to put up with nothing. That's not exactly how we feel. So there's a there's a different TV channel for every different group. And then outside TV channels, there's a different Facebook feed. There's a different Instagram feed. There's a different YouTube channel. If you want to be only black trans Muslims, you could be that and your community can be based on that. And that's it. And if you want to be Asian women that like Hello Kitty and that's it, that can be your community and that's it. And you don't have to tolerate nothing outside of that community if you don't want to. So in yeah, a way, yeah, yeah. I feel like we're less tolerant because we have the ability to not. Does that make sense? I, I like what you're saying. Um, I do think that uh, back in the day, the TV and the movies and the magazines, it did kind of fuck us up too. And the reason it fucked us up is because it's one thing to get a uh, 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 image of a person right mm. uh, the, the stereotypes of a person yes or, or the caricature of a person whether it's a white person black person gay person you know trans person a jewish person whatever what italian person we all saw these caricatures yep. of these okay. people on tv so that makes us assume yep we know who and what these yeah. people are you're right and and look since back in the day, you're trying to appeal to everyone. When, when you try to appeal to everybody, what do you do? You Tell appeal me. to no one. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Almost, true. right? So it's like, yeah, yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. trying to appeal to black, Asian, white, da, 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 yeah. I'm going to water down everything to the most common denominator. So none of them are going to be like truly unique and nuanced characters. It probably wasn't to like shows started popping up on... I mean, maybe you saw different versions of it, but like I'm trying to think of like, you know, shows started popping up on HBO, right? Like The Wire, where it was like this really nuanced look into like a specific group, you know? And then you saw like Sopranos and these different things. Even like Sex in the City was like a nuanced look into like aging single white ladies, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, and then all of a sudden, those jokes reflected that specific community. You know, and I think you saw a lot of this start to pop up afterwards. But I think prior to that, everybody was a stereotype. Like if you everybody look at, was just stereotype, weren't nah. they? Like back in the day, like I, I think to be honest with you, I think we're just getting out of that. You, you say back in the day, I think we're just getting out. Like of that. now, I think you're I, seeing nuanced black characters on TV, or now you're seeing black nuanced black, well, gay well, characters, well, or something well, like that. You know what? That's that, no, that's so interesting because think about it. When I grew up in the '80s, mm -hmm. all I saw was. What, what I would call now positive black characters. But back then, I didn't look at them as positive black characters. They were just black people. When I watch Good Times, I, yeah. know the, I know them. When I watch The Jeffersons, I know them. When I watch Martin, I know them. When I watch Fresh Prince, I know them. When I watch Living Single, I know them. Uh -huh. Like all of these different black people were represented. I know black people from the ghetto in the hood. I know educated black people. Right. I know black people who are well off. Like I, my, th that was a... That, that showed me that my people weren't monolithic and I knew all of these different variations of black people. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that experience with everybody else, though. You know why? Because majority of my life, you were I was around you. my own people. Yeah. So, so you, everything else yeah. I saw, but whether it was how, how when you're white, you, you, you do the white voice. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 white yeah, people yeah. having small penises and black guys having big yeah. penises. Like regular all that penises. Stuff. Regular penises. Not small. No, it's no, regular. It was small. It was no, they're small. regular. No, it's regular. No. No, it it's was regular. It was, it was a thing when a white guy had a big penis. Like that was like, oh, that's a new character. I never <laughs> seen that. <laughs> I never seen. I never seen that in a movie before <laughs> or a TV show. You know, but and and not only not only uh the people, the experiences. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and and now that I'm older, when I think back on a lot of those shows, whether it was Cosby Show, Different World, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Girlfriends, whatever it was, I have lived at least all of those experiences in a TV, in, in, in a TV show because they were mm. real life experiences. Right. Now, I, don't, I, I don't know if that was the same for you with the stuff you was watching. I'm trying to think like, I'm really trying to trying to think like 
to be honest, I can't I can't tell you what it's like to be Martin. I can't tell you what to be like a middle aged black dude, you know, with a career and whatever he was doing radio or some shit, right? Like I don't What's up, WZUP yeah. baby? <laughs> I can't tell you what that's like. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. So for me, it seemed like the most normal thing. I know this sounds really weird, but when oh, I was a kid watching Martin, it wasn't a black show to me. I, I get exact. I know exactly. Does what that makes, bro. Isn't that seem weird? But it's, I, I, I never watched Married with Children and said this is as a, white, a show. white show. I never did. Al Bundy was just a loser. Yeah, and I understood. I understood the Al Bundys of the world because even at whatever age I was, there was always that washed up dude who was a star football player yeah. in high school. Who somebody was pointing out. My daddy would point him like, oh, you look at him. He he used to be a star wide receiver. Now he just washed up. Like we all knew these people. So I knew the character of Al Bundy. So, I knew that curmudgeon. So so then I'm then I'm curious, like, when did I see my first black show? Or when did I see my first like black movie? When did I see something that I was like, oh, this is specifically black, not a show that has black people in it? Let me think about that on my end. What was the first show I saw that was? So Al Al just said Empire, but I think it was before that. I think it was movies. Like I think Empire. I I think I st- I know that was like what? <laughs> that was late, bro. <laughs> Fuck out. <laughs> late. No, but like I'm saying, like okay, rem- I remember there were movies where I kept seeing the same black actors in them. Like Morris Chestnut would be in them, and I think then I started realizing, oh shit, there's like specifically black films that are targeted to a black audience that are reusing the same black Hollywood actors. Yeah. I, st- I hate like, how you say and then I And then I went, Will Smith is not part of that. Denzel's not part of it. I was like, oh, there's a different... What, 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 it's because Will and Denzel took roles that were just big, broad, bold stories. And 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 by the way, there's nothing wrong with are you frozen? No, nah, I'm here. I'm just, I'm just, okay. I'm like, really, nothing- <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just like really engaged, bro. <laughs> there's, 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 there, by the way, the stuff you're talking about, yeah, a lot of that stuff was 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 niche, niche, niche. Yeah, niche. What the fuck yeah. am I trying to say? Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Don't you say it because it might come out wrong. Yeah. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what you're talking about is niche stuff, like stuff that is specifically black. Yes. And 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 for us, by us. Yes. And guess what? That's fine. It's I great. think everybody should have that. I really do. I think that one of the problems that we're having now is what you said earlier. Everybody's trying to cater to everybody. To everybody. So you're technically not catering to nobody. We're all missing each other. Yeah. We're all missing each other. Like, I don't think it's anything wrong with having a country music television station. It shouldn't be. If people like and, country music, watch it. And, and if that station is 95% white because that's what country is, fine. But when country starts to reflect the Hootie and the Blowfishes and the Little Nas X, give them they love. Same thing with hip hop. If hip hop is a black genre and, you know, we're, we're over here with it, fine. But when other people start embracing it and they decide, hey, I want to rap too or I want to dress like this, let them rock out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's fine. But there's nothing wrong with saying, okay, that's country. There's nothing wrong with saying, oh, that's, that's hip hop. There's nothing wrong with saying, oh, that's white, even though I don't even know what white is. What, right. what, what would be white? Cult- culturally know. what's white yeah i don't know i this is i don't even know anymore <laughs> i don't even know anymore bro I, 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 I is it safe is it safe to say larry bird is a white basketball player yeah 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 larry bird but basketball i okay. would <laughs> yeah but basketball isn't exactly the whitest thing but yeah i hear you yeah no it, yeah basketball don't count either because basketball is all about skill set we don't chalk shit up to like white but there are some white things like white water rafting is pretty white Canoeing is white. Golf is white. Tennis is pretty white. Is canoeing white? Canoe- First people I saw canoeing in a canoe was Native, Native Americans, Americans bro. bro. It might be Native Americans. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. My first images of a canoe was yeah. definitely uh, in- indigenous people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. But, you know, I do want to talk about, um, I want to talk about Nick Cannon because I think this all goes into the conversation. I don't think do we we don't have to rehash exactly what happened this week, right? Like I think I people think I, know what's going on. I think I mean I mean very quickly we could just say that uh you know he was fired from uh MTV CBS for making CBS anti- Viacom. Sorry, sorry. CBS Viacom for making uh anti-Semitic statements 
Um, not for the racist statements, <laughs> just for the anti-Semitic ones. Well, <laughs> which I thought you know, was really funny. <laughs> Here's the thing about the here's the thing about the, the the racist statements, right? Yeah. I will I will never chalk up. Um, I don't, first of all, I don't think people are inherently evil. Black people, white people, I don't think nobody yeah. is born inherently evil. You can't believe um, in God and believe people are born evil. No, That's not I don't possible. believe that. Like, I don't believe that. I don't believe somebody's lack of mel- melanin makes them less any more evil, any more savage. Now, if you want to have a conversation about you know the 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 massive racial violence that that white people have 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 done in America. That, that's a con- that's definitely so, a conversation. So here's where Nick fucked up, and it's it's really because Nick is regurgitating talking points and not synthesizing his own ideas. Right? Talk to me. If I agree with you, and and so he so he's regurgitating talking points. I forget the the name of the woman who wrote the book, Francis Clearly West or something like that. I think uh, the ISIS Papers. I think is the name of the book, but like. She makes a lot of crazy statements in it uh, using like pseudoscience, one being that like white people invented homosexuality in the black community to keep the numbers down and like a lot of just other like nonsense shit, right? A bunch of stuff you can't prove. A bunch of stuff you can't And <laughs> one of the things Nick said is that because uh, white people are deficient of melanin, it, it forced them to leave Africa and live in these harsh environments and the harsh environments and the fact that they weren't built because they they were, as he says, less than they created them or made them be savages, made white people become savages. And then they did all this savage shit. Right. So it's pseudoscience used to justify something. And here's why it's fucked up. And I got to credit my boy Robbie for saying this. He, he put a something really interesting on here. He goes, if he was to just say, if Nick Cannon was just to say, hey, listen, for years, white people have called black people savages but yes. that's weird because white, white people, people have a have, history of mass racial violence in this country or not even this but, country or colonization in the or world colonization in the world so, so whether you want to call it savagery murder right. whatever you want to call it it's accurate to say that so, that, that, so, that they have a history of that exactly so if he said who you calling savage right like if if if, if, if he said why would you call us savages when the most savage action is colonizing and you know oppressing Absolutely. these people, I don't think he'd get any pushback from anyone. You know why? Think about it. Me and you are agreeing right now, right? We can agree that white people have had a history of mass racial violence on this planet, right? Right. But if I say, and it's because y'all lack melanin, exactly. If you try, now to we ask, arguing about some stupid. Shit. If you try to add science that is not supported by anything. Then you get into this eugenics discussion where certain people are actually built better than or made better than based on the DNA that they have. And that is the definition of racism. That's the uh, definition of the, like Hitler ideology. Like that's where the, shit gets bad. And the reason black people uh, were labeled three fifths of a human being in the Constitution. Right. Because of this skin. And that's, because that, that, that's not accurate. The southern southern people need some votes. That's some, why. Some, exactly. But, <laughs> yeah. I, but I'm I'm just I'm just simply saying you can't look at me just because of the color of my skin and say say I'm less than a person. Just like I can't look at you and just assume okay they're a savage. All right. 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 So so I, that that's that's where that conversation got messed up at. But I think um. But that's what happens crazy. when you're not thinking for yourself, and that's what happens when you're just spewing the shit that you read. And that's really on Nick. He got to be accountable for that. If you're gonna, if you're gonna read some wild shit like that, you have to be aware of what you're re- reading and aware of what you're regurgitating. And this is the problem when you exist in your echo chamber. Like, if you're not talking to anybody that doesn't push back, I mean, people might be annoyed when we argue on this show, but it's good. It's healthy. I'll learn that's- some shit. You'll learn some shit. We'll have our ideas bounce off each other, and they just get sharper. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. What do they say? Like iron sharpens iron or something like that? Yep. But he's still sharp and still. Or steel sharp. So he's out there with a dull blade because he got nobody pushing back. And then the finally the time you get pushed back, it's when you say it to the fucking world, you lose your show. And that's why I said if you're gonna engage in those conversations, and not even just with Jewish people, if you're gonna engage in conversations uh about the, the LGBT community, the black community, you know, the Asian community. How about talk to somebody from that community? Like if you're going to have that conversation about Jewish right. people, talk to a Jewish scholar. Talk to somebody from that community who can correct you when you say something that's anti-Semitic, who can right. correct you when you say something that 
that could be offensive. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and yeah. like once again, I can't win that argument. I can't tell right. you that you're savage just because you lack melanin. Right. Okay. But we can have a conversation about the fact that racial violence has been a distinct part of this country since 1660. 100%. That's a fact. And we nobody, can, nobody and, would and, deny and, that, though. You can't. You can't deny nobody. it. I can, you can. You can name a million different things that have happened. Not even, even just the black people. Even the most racist white person would agree, and they'd probably be like, "Yeah, we did that." But whoa, they'd whoa, agree. Whoa. Oh, let's go back to something you said, Schultz. Go. If they know. Ah, yes, 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 yes. They might not know. Well, you I'm, think I'm, not, I'm would, not even joking. They, they might they not would, even know, think bro. Those were the good old days. They they'd probably be celebrating those days. <laughs> you know yes, what I'm the, like, <laughs> the ones that know are like, yeah, you know what? That's back. right. You said you, you said you said you sitting there talking about uh, three thousand four hundred and forty six black people getting lynched in America from eighteen eighty two to nineteen sixty eight, yeah. and they they dig hard. Like, Woo -hoo -hoo! They, they celebrate Woo -hoo! June eighteenth. <laughs> the last the last day. It's it's wild though, right? Because like I talked to um. I talked to like eight of my Jewish homies yesterday. Right. But oh, oh, real quick, just to clarify, okay. they didn't, mm -hmm. that's not why Nick got fired. Nick didn't get fired for the savage comment. He got fired no, for no. the for the the anti-Semitic comment. And and a lot of people, I think, are just so unaware of like Jewish culture, Jewish history that they don't even know why the comment he said was anti-Semitic. I listen, I had no idea. Yeah. I just I just know. That I can't tell a Jewish person what is anti-Semitic. Just right. like nobody can tell me what racism is. Just like nobody can tell a woman what sexism is. Just like nobody can tell a gay person what homophobia is. When I heard it mm -hmm. and all I saw the Jewish community in an outrage, I said, Well, he he must have said something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even if I'm not a even if I don't know exactly what he said, because I honestly truly did not know what the hell he was talking about. Even if I yeah. didn't know what they said, I knew it had to be something. So, you know what you do in those situations? You listen. Yeah. We have a Jewish person who's a producer of this show. Right. Chris Moreau. We let him talk last time and uh didn't go so well, so we shut him up. I, I, I think he's a little <laughs> I think he's a little sharper. Chris. Yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? I'm here to help. <laughs> tell us tell us why what Nick Cannon said was was anti-Semitic as and, a Jewish. And Chris, man. can you just clarify what he said first and then then do the uh tell us why? Well, I think you're referring to his comments about the Rothschilds and a shadow uh, secret Jewish banking system. I'm assuming that's the part we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And the fake, right. the fake dollar and, and those things. Yeah, I actually didn't understand the fake dollar comment, to be honest, but it, it all ties into a larger conspiracy theory that, uh, you know, basically claims that for hundreds and hundreds of the years, Jews have secretly been controlling financial institutions around the world and pulling strings, making wars happen, and basically responsible. It's, it's a scapegoating theory. It scapegoats a lot of the economic issues that plague countries specifically in Europe and blames that on the Jews. And the reason it's so dangerous is you know, in recent history, I'm talking 60 years ago, it's gone beyond just rhetoric and talk. It's actually been used to fuel the Holocaust, to fuel genocide. You know, the, the, the idea that the Jews were behind the destruction of the German economy post-World War I is really what fueled the Nazis' rise to power. The mm -hmm. belief that Jewish banking families like the Rothschilds and other, you know, similar institutions were the cause of Germany's collapse. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the term that was used at the time was they had stabbed the Germans in the back, but the Germans would have come out victorious after World War I and were in much better shape, but the Jews somehow from behind the scenes prevented that. That was really what gave the Nazis their initial momentum and brought them into power, and we know how that played out. So when Jews today hear you talking about secret banking systems and the Rothschilds, that's what it brings up. That it's history. A, it's, that's, a, it's, a, it's a trigger. It's a, it's a, it opens it's a up trigger. a wound that, that, hasn't, that, that probably will never truly heal. And, it and, and it's, it's important to note, and I'm, not, and I'm curious to see if, if you were raised like this, Chris, but like a lot of my Jewish friends were raised from a very young age 
to never forget what happened at the uh, you know in the Holocaust, but also the events that led up to it. So anytime there is an event that is even close, a sentiment that exists that's even close to what led to the Holocaust, like saying the Jews control the banks or that kind of stuff, this is this dog whistle that goes off in a lot of Jews' brains where they're like, uh oh, this is how it starts. We got to nip this in the bud now. That's but that's what you should do, right? That's how you prevent history from repeating itself. I think it's written. Yeah, now, I Chris, mean, was that you, you know, were every upbringing? every uh, Passover you read a book called the Haggadah, which tells the uh, story of the Jews' exodus from Egypt and getting out of slavery in Egypt. Right. And you know, I read that every year from a kid up until this year. And you know, every Haggadah is a little bit different, but mine always ended kind of with the refrain "Never again." Those never are the two again, words yeah. that you hear over and over again as a Jew. Mm -hmm. Never again, never again. So when you hear talk about secret Jewish banking systems, yeah, I don't even think it's a dog whistle. I mean, I think it's pretty upfront. We're going to shut that down right now because, unfortunately, we know where that can go. And, and it can escalate yeah. very quickly. And a thing to clarify, which is very important, nobody or no system is above criticism. For example, like the Rothschilds and the role that they they specifically, that family specifically have played in like global banking, they're not above criticism. And simply criticizing the family is in no way anti-Semitic. But oftentimes the people that are anti-Semitic are using their role in global banking as a justification for their anti-Semitism. In the same right, way- Right, it gets, conf it gets it conflated. It gets conflated, right? In the same way that like people who- do not care about black people at all, use black on black crime as a retort to Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Right? Like the, right. like all those white people talking about black on black crime, they were never doing anything for black on black crime before Black Lives Matter, and they won't do anything after Black Lives Matter. They're simply doing it as another way of going shut up. Right. And, this, and the uh, fact is, there are plenty of powerful banking families historically and present day across the world. I mean, I don't think Chase Bank, I could be wrong. I don't believe that's run by Jews. There are plenty of banks that wield tremendous power and, you know, they should be scrutinized and probably in a lot of situations criticized. But those aren't the ones you hear about. You hear about the Rothschilds, the Rothschilds, the Rothschilds. So when you hear about the Rothschilds in this setting, yeah, it it is a trigger, essentially. So I can talk. So I totally understand. And, you know, um, I talked to like eight of my Jewish Jewish people yesterday. Chris mm -hmm. was one of them. And every single one of them explained to me why what Nick said was anti-Semitic, you know, in, in, in different variations of the same way. And it basically was, you know, it took to the root of it is those were just like the two talking points that were used that have been used to persecute Jewish people for years. So, you know, yeah, the like other I thing said, was the the Semite. Uh, uh, they said, like, black people, were the original Semitic people. And I'm going to tell you something. Can yeah. I tell you something? Can I admit something? Right yeah, now? go. I have no idea what Semitic means. Bro, I, I'm talking about zero. I, I, matter of fact, I'm gonna look it up right I'm now. I'm with you. No I had to learn last night. I called my boy Dove. You met Dove, and yep. uh, and I was like, explain what was going on in here. And he's like, it's a semantic argument, right? So Semite or the Semitic people refers to the people that speak Semitic languages. I believe that's Hebrew, Aramaic. These are any like the old biblical languages. Is that, is that right, Chris? Right. It would basically so, refer. Uh, to the peoples of like, I think you call it the Levant, you know, it'd be modern day Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, uh, Palestine, Israel, that, that area. area. Right. So, but here's the thing. Um, and so here's the thing. So the people from that region are the Semitic people. Now, I think that he was saying that the, I th believe that he was, he was saying Ashkenazi Jews were not the Semitic people because they're not originally allegedly from that region. Right. Who said that? I think Nick was alluding to that. Oh, okay, okay. Right? So he was like, they're trying to be Semitic like us. But I think that they would give pushback and say, hey, the original Semitic people were not black or white. They were Arab looking because that's where it started. So yeah, and, and the dictionary says Semitic relating to or denoting a family of languages that include Hebrew, Arabic, Aramic, and certain ancient languages yeah. such as Phoenician and Akkadian constituting the main subgroup of the Afro-Asiatic family. Right. Right. I don't, I, I'm i still- So just the know. regions that spoke that language. I don't know any spoke of, that I don't language. Know, I don't know. Okay. And to be fair, those languages were spoken all the way down to Ethiopia because I believe one of the guys from the 12 tribes went down to Ethiopia and that's why they're Ethiopian Jews. Right. You know, so 
it's not to say that there aren't, but to say that the original Semitic people were black people, I would say the original uh, Semitic people were Arab looking. Man, I don't know about any of this. Right. All I know is you can't tell someone what should and shouldn't offend them. <laughs> okay. Right. So, so Nick Cannon has apologized. And, oh, and, yeah. and this, and, and this apology was, it seemed, let me, let me, let me read some of it. I mean, uh, he went in. You talking about the Twitter one? Yeah, the one on Twitter. Did you send me that, Taylor? I know I had it in here. Where is... Did you put... uh, Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. He says, first and foremost, I extend my deepest and most sincere apologies to my Jewish sisters and brothers for the hurtful and divisive words that came out of my mouth during my interview with Richard Griffin. Mm -hmm. Didn't didn't even call him professor. He said Richard Griffin. Right? Is he an actual professor? Does anybody know? Uh, they, they reinforce the worst stereotypes of a proud and magnificent people. And I feel ashamed of the uninformed and naive Ooh. place that these words came from. Ooh. The video of this interview has since been removed. Ooh. While the Jewish experience encomp- encompasses more than 5,000 years, and there is so much I have yet to learn, I have had at least a minor history lesson over the past few days. And to say that it is eye-opening would be a vast understatement. I want to express my gratitude to the rabbis, community leaders, and institutions who reached out to me to help enlighten me instead of chastising me. I want to assure my Jewish friends, new and old, that this is only the beginning of my education. I am committed to deeper connections, more profound learning, and strengthening the bond between our two cultures today and every day going forward. I'm going to tell you why I don't have any problems with Nick Cannon apologizing, because I see people giving him backlash for that. If Nick learned what I learned yesterday, or if you listen to what Chris just said, who's Jewish, and Chris is telling you why what he said was anti-Semitic, and, and if Nick learned you know, that what he said was offensive, if his intent was to not offend, apologize. There we go. What's wrong with, what's wrong, what's wrong with that? And, and, and I'm going to tell you something else that I read what I read Fox's statement to the apology because you know they're keeping Nick Cannon on the mass singer I love what they as, said as long as he apologized Fox said he is clear and remorseful that his words were wrong and lacked both understanding and context and inadvertently key word in this sentence inadvertently promoted hate this was important for us to observe Nick has sincerely apologized and quickly taken steps to educate himself and make amends. I, I, I really think, to be honest with you, and I think this is where MTV uh, or Viacom, CBS, or whatever, really fucked up, is that they could have taken this as a learning moment, dude. You could, like right now the what? Fox, Not too late. Say what? Not too late. It might be. Hopefully, they can work something else out. But like mm-hmm. right now, what Fox did is they gave everybody an opportunity to be educated on why this is anti-Semitic instead of what we always do is just cancel a motherfucker, don't explain shit, and then all the people who don't understand the cancellation are just sitting there going, well, what, what, what? what? Well, I don't want to speak out because then I'll look racist, but what, what? All right, we can take a break for a second, pay some bills. Guys, if you have a business and you do not have a website, I'm sorry, it is not legit. The internet is where it's at right now, and in order to be a functional part of of this economy, this internet economy, you need to have a website. Where can you get your website? Squarespace, simple as that, okay? Not only can you buy the domain, but you can also build your website there for free, okay? When you're ready to launch it, you'll pay. You're gonna use our code IDIOT um, and you're gonna get 10% off your website or domain and they literally have the most easiest, the easiest platform to build the website. It's unbelievable. They have all these things already pre-made. You can organize, add them there. They have selling software. They have a 24 hour uh, customer support line. It's like incredible. It is the easiest way to build a website you can possibly do. And it seems like a daunting task because who the fuck knows code? Who the fuck knows anything? All you gotta do is go to squarespace.com right? Use the promo code idiot. You get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Go do that. That's squarespace.com. Use that promo code idiot. Support this show. Support your business. Now let's get back to it. Like every time we cancel someone for blackface, you know, we don't explain why blackface is wrong. We just cancel. And then there's all these little kids who know no fuck, who have no clue about why blackface is wrong. They don't know what the Sambo character is. They don't know what black, you know, exploitation in the movies is. They don't know any of these things. They just go, I guess blackface is wrong. And then they just keep it moving. 
I agree with you, Schultz, but let's be honest. Nobody gets canceled for blackface. It's, just, it's, just, it's a pause. It's some, it gets some, social pause. Media, some social media outrage. Yeah. But I haven't, I haven't seen anybody get, get fired for blackface yet. Um, but I do want to say. Nah, what's that girl's name? Megan who? Kelly. She got fired for her opinions on blackface. She Megan like, Kelly? Yeah. Remember when she had that NBC show? It was something like. It was like. Uh, she said something like, well, what's wrong with blackface? If Megan Kelly, the singer? That's she's a singer, Megan Kelly. Yeah, I don't know, but she was that blonde lady that like uh, Trump asked if she was on her period. I think she had blood oh. coming out of here, blood coming out of there. No, I'm thinking of fucking Megan Trainer. My Megan God, Trainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Megan Kelly. Um, I'm listen, fat though, and you got the word the Trainer in your name. I don't quite remember that situation, but if you ask the question, you should receive an answer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If 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 somebody says, "Well, what's wrong with blackface?" Let me tell you what's wrong with blackface. Now, after I tell you what's wrong with blackface, if you say to me again, well, what's wrong with that? Yeah. Now we got a problem. Now it should be a problem because you're not willing to learn. What did we say earlier? Two types of ignorance. It's what you don't know and it's what you think you know. So when you think you know something and you're convinced you know something and you're spewing that information, when somebody gives you the correct information, if you continue to spew you're wrong information. Now you're just being a problem. Yo, I wonder if in the future people, everybody who's going to be okay with blackface, like black black people will be okay with blackface. As long as it's not done in a hateful way, as long as it's just like imitating a character. Nah, I think people should leave it alone. I, I, <laughs> no, I, I, I know that you say that, but I wonder if, if in the future we'll be so detached from the films and TV shows that used it, right? Like, Nah, because I'll be honest all, with you, I can't name a single film or TV show that used it. Can you name a, like what was your what was the blackface movie you hated the most? I didn't hate it, but Bamboozled was all about blackface. But that's what, that's, it, what, that, that's but, what the movie was about. But it was Spike a movie, movie about blackface. It wasn't like an actual movie that used blackface. Yeah, so I think in that context, it'll be fine because the only way a white person could put blackface on right in mm -hmm. the future is if they're playing a black role or if they're playing a role of somebody from that time period who used to do blackface for whatever reason. So there's really, why is there, a, there's no reason for a white person to be playing a black role in this decade. You know what I'm saying? Just like no, there's no I'm reason for- I'm talking about like some kid who like really admires a basketball player or fucking President Obama. Don't do it. Just wear the jersey. You I know. You got, that, you, you got that Jordan jersey hanging behind you. You can put it on. I know who you repping. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. I'm just the saying. Only... I don't know. It. I. I just wonder in the future if like if people just lose touch with the where it came from, man. I the really only black. That. The only bl the only colored faces that you can get away with is the Incredible Hulk and an Avatar. Okay. Everything else. Nope. You just can't do it. Um. That's not but, true. I think you should be able to do the other races because there's no history of a. Uh, of uh, like other racist face. Don't listen to Andrew. We just talked about influence and inspiration. Sure there is. <laughs> well, what? Don't listen to Andrew. I will say this though. I will say this. There is like Asian for sure, right? Because I think it's what is it? Breakfast at Tiffany's. Wasn't the, the Good Earth? All these, all these movies where they cast white actors and literally pulled their eyes back. There's yeah, a long history of that. Wasn't there Pink Panther or some shit like that too? <laughs> Wasn't that motherfucker? Well, I, think that was, I think that was at least an Asian actor. Uh, the Good Earth and Breakfast at Tiffany's are kind of seen as the two most egregious examples of it. So I guess you could say if there was somebody doing that, then it. So there has been Asian face. Oh shit! Oh, don't Yo, there's do been black it. face and Asian face. What about Indian face? I think you don't could do Indian do face, bro. I think no, you, you can Indian face. I think you was good. No, you can't. You it's, sure? It's pointless. It's pointless. You it's can't no do need. Indian face, bro. What? Let me ask you a question. Why would you want to? I don't know, man. Maybe you got to play a role. You know what I mean? Go cast the Native American. There's plenty of indigenous oh, people out here. Oh, I didn't mean have. those Indians. What I meant mean? the other Indians, like Akash Indians. Uh, go get Akash. <laughs> go get, oh, you mean like, okay, yeah, go get Akash. Go, there's plenty of them out here. Like, no. Listen. But what about um, for a Halloween costume? Can you go, can you be Aladdin for Halloween and bronze your face up? Can you be Aladdin? Bronze your um, face up. No, I've seen people. I've seen people actually get. Uh, I've seen people get backlash for that. For, for doing for that exact costume. Question: Can you get a spray tan? Women do that all the time. Can you get a spray tan? What color is it? It's tan. That's brown. Technically, you're doing brown body. 
it you doing brown if you, face? If, if, if you if you brown if you face, do, white if you foot. Do, if you do, if you put on spray tan and then dress like Cardi B, and then run around and tell everybody, ah, you know what I mean? Then they're gonna be like, wait a minute, you're appropriating culture. But if you just okay, got a spray tan because you want a spray tan, that's not a problem. Can you go tanning, get really tan, and then dress like Cardi B and run around and go, ah, is that doing blackface? Yes. Yes, and I'll tell you why. But you we'll get tan. To- that's natural from the sun. From the sun. That's that melanin oh, Nick was talking uh, about. But 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 you said she's running around acting like Cardi B. We had a conversation earlier mm-hmm. in this podcast about stereotypes and about how a lot of the images that we saw on television mm-hmm. were stereotypes of these people. So you're you're pretending to be what you think a Dominican woman like Cardi B acts like. Are you pretending to be? That's what you think a black person acts like. That's That would be true if you were just being a generic Dominican girl or generic black person. But if you're specifically trying to be Cardi B, you're just walking around going, coronavirus, coronavirus. That's not good. It's not Why good. I don't not? see the point. I, I, I just don't see the point of it. Like, And by the way, you, can get, you probably can get away with it without the, the tan. Like, just don't do the tan. If you want to put on a Fashion Nova onesie, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? A Fashion Nova cat suit and pretend to be Cardi B or, 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 or uh, uh, mimic the spirit of Cardi B, rock out. That's but the thing, bro. Don't do the spray tan. But that, not spray tan, but that's the thing. If, if white people, if you want to do blackface bad enough, you got to earn it. Get that fucking skin cancer. Go out there and tan the fuck out of yourself. How bad do you want it? Because that's a natural, bro. That's a natural. Right. Hold on, back to the back to the conversation. We okay, because 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 I, I need to I need to address a few. Okay, people. go go yeah, hit it hit it. Um, because I'm I'm I I I made a I, I talked about this you know on Breakfast Club earlier this week, mm-hmm. and um, they started lumping me in, you know, with 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 Nick Cannon and you know and and Diddy and D Wade and all types of other stuff, right? Uh, and I saw Candace Owens. Candace Owens, how are you? That's my uh third cousin on my father's side. Um, she tweeted out yesterday, I respect C to God, uh-huh. but his comment that Nick Cannon's firing proves Jews have the power is off base. Uh. Then, she goes, then she goes on to say, did the hundreds of white people who have been fired over these past few months for disagreeing with the radical goals of Black Lives Matter prove that we have the power? Now, Chris, I asked you last night, why is me saying uh, Jewish uh, Nick Cannon being fired proves that Jewish people have the power. I mean, why, 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 you, why, why was that? Why is that offending some people? I think it's a similar triggering mechanism in that when Jews hear the word power, especially in the context of media or finance, there's always been an implication that again, there are these behind the thing scenes, things that they control that they control the entire entertainment industry, that they control um, the entire finance industry. And I think that's when you start getting into the same problems you get when you talk about the Rothschild. So I don't think that's what you intended. So what I would say is what it's really about is Jews do a good job at holding people accountable, right, for anti-Semitic opinions. Not that they are controlling everything behind the scenes, but when somebody says something publicly, they hold that person accountable. And we've seen it in the situation. I mean, that's literally why you have an organization like the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League. That's literally what they're there to do, to stand up and fight back, push back against defamation. But I think some... Sorry, sorry, Chris. I would also say it makes it easier when you're in a position of power to execute that. And I think a a good example of that is when Roseanne said that that lady looked like, uh, what did she say? She looked like Planet of the Apes and ISIS or something like that. Remember? Yes. Remember? I, remember that. I think it was, uh, uh, it, it was uh, Valerie Jarrett, I think. Valerie she was Jarrett, about. right? Yeah. When she said that, she got fired from her own show, and I believe the head of ABC was a black woman. I'm pretty That's, sure of that, th- uh, yeah, and I think right. that, and think that that goes to show that like when there are people in positions of power, they can protect their communities and the world from racism, and that is the importance of representation. Is that not and, wrong? And, and, and that is exactly what I was talking about. Is that See, but the, it, is that wrong uh, to say? 
No. And, 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 and I just want to go back to, you know, Candace, you know, I would ask Candace, first of all, what hundreds of white people have been fired for disagreeing with mm. the radical goals of BLM? Who, who are these hundreds of white people who have been fired for disagreeing yeah. with BLM? I, I haven't seen them. OK, but but to answer her question, black people don't have the power. You know, it's not enough of us, as we just said, in positions of power to have the power. But I think we built a little bit of power via social media, enough power that we can raise awareness to racism and bigotry, you know, but not the power we could have if we own something, you know, and, and, and if we were the boss, I don't have to ask anybody to fire somebody or demand somebody be fired. I could just do it. Right. If I don't agree with what they did. And I feel like we we all would want that kind of power. Right. And, and as Chris just said. Just like Jewish people demand accountability for attacks against their culture, that's something we all should want to emulate. Yeah, I, I don't think it should be a criticism. I think it should be something you aspire to to get to. And and, and so so when I was you know looking on you know social media yesterday, and people were sending me articles because I was really kind of out of the loop. I saw a, a, a Washington Examiner said that I implied Jewish people control the media. Like they, they posted what Nick Cannon said and then said, I doubled down on what Nick said. I would simply ask those two journalists, why are y'all twisting my words? Don't put no stereotypes in my mouth. OK, yeah. they both they they both said I implied Jewish people control the media. Why would you do that? I didn't imply anything. I made a statement. And if the word power makes you feel uncomfortable, I'll simply repeat what I just said. Jewish people demand accountability for attacks against their culture. That's something we should all want to emulate. And I think you qualified it with your statement about Breonna Taylor, right? Didn't you yeah. say, didn't you say like, like Nick Cannon got Nick, 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 Nick Cannon, you know, no, you uh, said something about like, yeah, I would like to have the ability. I, we can't even get the cops fired. Black people can't even get the cops fired who killed for Breonna, killing us for killing us. Yeah. And I was like, I think that was the most important as part of that statement that they just kind of skirted over is that you were using this as an example of something that you would like to have. We would love to be in these positions of power where they can't. And on social media, it does exist. People are afraid of black Twitter coming from them. They're afraid oh, of pissing off black Twitter. Let's let's, let's be real. And absolutely. it's been used as a uh, sometimes it's been used as a, a, a weapon of uh a miscalculated weapon, but sometimes been used as a weapon of justice. You know what I'm I, saying? Real talk. Like there's a lot of people. I don't think, I don't think you have close to the amount of attention that's brought in these cases. If it wasn't for black Twitter. Oh, a hundred percent. But that's, that's the little bit of power that black Twitter has. Mm -hmm. And listen, that power is going to grow. You know, it's growing. It's going to grow from something that's on social media to actually creating some systemic change. You're seeing it now. You're seeing these organizations hiring more black people, hiring more brown people, hiring more indigenous people, putting black people in positions of power. So organizations and companies don't make these kind of mistakes. Exactly. Listen, we all have cultural blind spots. We all do. To act like we don't is, is crazy. And, and, and to yeah. avoid having those cultural blind spots, you have people around you that are from that culture. And I think, I, it, yeah, go, go, go. No, when, when I see people, when I saw people pushing back on me yesterday, I didn't get mad and say, y'all tripping, this is true. I'm like, Chris, why are they upset about this? I thought that was a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 want, I want that type of ability to demand accountability for attacks against my culture. Yeah. Like, that's the whole reason we get, Crazy on Karens. That's yeah. the whole reason we get crazy on people who say the N-word all willy-nilly. If you do a random act of racism on your job or in the street, it's the reason people are recording you and sending it on social media so people can raise hell. So hopefully some accountability can take place. Yeah, I think that's it's it. great. Yeah, that's it. I, I'm just like... I'm just annoyed at Candace because Candace knows she got some questionable shit in her her past, some very questionable anti-Semitic shit in her past. So for her to pop off in the mouth is very curious. It's very curious. She's had some uh, interesting things to say, has she not? Oh, you talking about when um that Germany uh, thing where she literally? Uh, 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 yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to misquote it. Let me, All right. Let me let me let me pull it up so. We're accurate. I don't want to do it. I can't believe she opened her mouth. I don't want to do what other people do to me. I can't believe she opened her mouth about this specific topic. That's that is crazy to me, with what she said in that 
What was oh. it? It was like a Senate committee hearing or something like that. And the Republicans sent Candace yeah, Owens yeah. there. And then I think Ted Lieu read something or no, played audio of something that she said. We should just tell people to Google it. Google Candace Owens. I got it right here if you need it. And Ted Lieu. I mean, listen, to be honest with you, I don't even want it. And the reason I don't want it is because I don't even know what the hell she was talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I don't know. I, I don't know what she was talking about. I just know that she she made a statement last year and she received backlash and people were calling her anti-Semitic. Um, so I, I don't know. No, I just thought it was strange that, you know, she would try to gaslight this situation. You know what I mean? As if I, as, and, and I don't understand why people like Mike Bress at the Washington Examiner and Emma Nolan at Newsweek try to gaslight this, this situation. Like, all I'm simply saying is don't put stereotypes in my mouth because I, I wasn't trying to imply anything. I wasn't trying to imply anything. I said yeah. what I said. I made, I, made, I made a statement and I will say it over and over. I love, oh, no, let me say this, let me say this. I love the way Jewish people demand accountability for, for, for attacks against their culture. And that's something that we all should want to emulate. That's something that we all should want. I don't care if you're a woman. I don't care if you're LGBT. I don't care if you're Asian American. If you are part of any marginalized, oppressed community and you feel like people need to be held accountable for anti-Semitic remarks, homophobic remarks, transphobic remarks, racial remarks. I am happy that, you know, you have the ability to, to raise awareness to it and get something done about it. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, and I, and I love I love I love that uh, Nick Cannon apologized. And I also love that Fox is keeping him on the mass singer. You know, um, I just think that, you know, I'm, I'm just happy. I'm just happy Nick didn't lose the mass thing. And I also hope CBS Viacom comes back around because, as you said earlier, Schultz, this is an opportunity to for learn, all of us to, e to, to educate each other, man. Bro, yes. I do. Nick I, I think most black people probably do not have a Jewish friend. I really believe that. Mm -mm. I, I really believe it. I, I think I, ha I have several. <laughs> you happen to be in entertainment. <laughs> but what I'm I don't saying even, is, you know, you know what? I don't know if that is a fact because I feel like that. I feel like that could be taken out of context. <laughs> nah, take it however you want. Take it however you want. Let me. But when you were growing up, did you have a Jewish friend? I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I I don't know if I did or not. Exactly. I never thought. Of, I never thought about you it. Never I, never, I didn't about ask. It. I didn't. I don't know if I had an Italian friend. I know. I don't know what Thomas is. Thomas is my first right fr white friend. Yeah. Thomas Evans. Thomas not used Jewish. to live right next uh, clearly. Not, not Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Chris, Chris, Chris. Why, why do y'all say it so? How do y'all know? Because we know. White guy with the name Thomas Seven in South Carolina. It's I'm not pretty Jewish. comfortable. So I don't like Chris, the way y'all are stereotyping. Me. Chris, I is it fair to say that most people, not just black people, white people, most people probably don't have Jews in their community? I think that's very fair. And actually, I got to jump off in a second, but I think it gets back to what you're, you were saying earlier about redlining, which is, you know, I grew up They're, in a Jewish world. You know, I'm yes. on the East Coast. My family's Jewish. I assume most people know Jewish history because it's what I grew up l being told and reading and learning about. Bro. Jews represent probably, I don't know the exact figure, under 2% of the of country. The, bro, th here's a, let me tell you some crazy shit. When I was growing yeah. up and I was in elementary school, I thought everybody yeah. was Jewish and I was the only one that was. It was me, Kwamina Pamford, and Alexis Perez. But you grew up in New York. But I grew, exactly. That's how different the world was. And then I got into like high school and I started to realize, oh shit, there's people who aren't Jewish as right. well. And, yeah. and most people aren't Jewish. I didn't realize that when I went to college, it was the first time I heard anybody say anything that was anti-Semitic. My boy said something like, oh yeah, they really try to Jew you down on the price. And I go, What? And they're like, yeah, they right. try to Jew you down. And I asked him about it, and no bullshit, he didn't even know it was wrong to say. He just went. You know why? Because that was the image. That was this. That's the stereotype they used to enforce on movies yo, and TV shows and everything else. Exactly. So it's like, so when he said it, he didn't even know it was wrong because he didn't have any Jewish people in his community. He didn't everybody be like, oh, that's been a stereotype that's used against us, right? So it's like, I truly believe that moments like this should be more educational than punitive. Right. Because if you just cut Nick out of here and get him the fuck out of here and he's just going to he's going to roll deeper into that type of like, no, no, uh, no, no. not even Nick. Somebody else is going to make that same sure, mistake. Sure. Because there was no there was no education done. Yeah. Right. And that and that's what should happen 
in any of these situations. That should happen when, you know, you say something anti-Semitic. That should happen when you say something that offends LGBT. That's what should happen when you say something that offends black people, mm-hmm. women, whatever. And, and that's that's the biggest takeaway. Right. And Chris, I don't want you to jump off just yet because I, I, I want to say this. Um, I just simply think Nick needs to be educated on the Jewish community. And in turn, he can help to educate Jewish folks on the black community. There you go. And, and we all have cultural blind spots. And sometimes those cultural blind spots make us perpetuate negative stereotypes that lead to people's persecution. That's why I love the statement that Fox said. Oh, let me read. Let me let me let me say this one line from Fox where they said this was important for us to observe. Nick has sincerely apologized. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, what he said was wrong and lacked both understanding and context and inadvertently certainly promoted hate. Right. Right. And I think that's what happens when you have cultural blind spots. You inadvertently promote hate. Are you inadvertently perpetuate negative stereotypes that leads to people's persecution? That's right. And that's that's what happened in this situation. But I don't care what nobody says. Black and Jewish people need each other. This is something me and Chris was talking about last night. Our struggles are too similar. It's two oppressed, marginalized groups. We need to come together in this moment and fight against the real enemy, me. which is white, which is Andrew. All right, <laughs> trying to take I'm me down, with, I'm, I'm, baby. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with come you every step it. of the way on that. But what, but seriously, the real enemy, which is white supremacy, that's it. Right, right. That's all, guys. I think, I think that was a. It. I think we got it. I think that was a great talk. Yeah. Uh, all right, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.